Hey, it's Darius. And when you start using I-75 CPA review, you'll start looking forward to score release as much as I do. So get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive of the revenue cycle, specifically for the CPA audit exam. We'll start with easier multiple choice and we'll work up to the more difficult. That's the I-75 difference. We do that in every video. So let's do a quick review of the revenue cycle by department and its purpose. So we start with the sales department, sometimes called the order department. They receive the customer order and prepare the sales order. You've got to know that the sales order is the first document in the revenue cycle and it's prepared in the sales or order department. Then the credit department, very important to approve or deny customer credit. The credit manager should not report to anyone in the sales department, such as the VP of sales, because if the credit manager had to answer to the VP of sales, then the VP of sales could put undue pressure on the credit manager to relax the credit to increase sales. So who should the credit manager report to? Not anybody within the sales department, the treasurer would be a good person for the credit manager to report to. The treasurer hangs out down here in the cash receipts department and doesn't really come into play until the company gets paid for the sale. So far we have the sales department, the credit department. Now, if the sales order is approved by the credit manager, then warehouse and shipping come into play. Warehouse has custody of the goods, so they'll fill the order. Shipping though, sends the goods outside the company to the customer. And these two departments, warehouse and shipping, should be segregated. Warehouse should not be able to ship goods outside the company. Warehouse should only be able to move goods around within the company. So it's the shipping department that will do what it sounds like it should do, which is ship the goods to the customer. And when that happens, the second document in the cycle is created by the shipping department known as the bill of lading. So on the exam, you'll have to know these documents and which department prepares them. So of course, the sales order we said was prepared in the sales department. That was the first document. The second one is the bill of lading and that's prepared by the shipping department. But only if the customer has good credit. And then we have the billings department whose job it is to invoice the customer for sales made on credit so the company can get paid, but only after shipping the goods. So the billings department's going to have to know that these goods are shipped, so they'll need a copy of the bill of lading. And then accounts receivable, tracks the status of customer accounts, monitors outstanding balances, and follows up on overdue payments. And then cash receipts. So if it's not a credit sale, but a cash sale, well then the cash receipts department would be directly involved in collecting the payment. But what if it's a credit sale? Eventually the company gets paid, maybe by check, and then that receipt of payment from the customer, from the credit sale, will come in to the cash receipts department. Cash receipts is a custody department. Accounts receivable would then have to make an accounting for that cash receipt. So accounts receivable and cash receipts should be segregated because here cash receipts has custody. Accounts receivable is an accounting function. So is billings, an accounting function. In a small company with limited budget, you could merge the two departments, billings and accounts receivable, because they're both accounting functions. But you would never want to merge accounts receivable with cash receipts, because accounts receivable is an accounting job, cash receipts is a custody function. So you'd want to make sure cash receipts and accounts receivable were segregated. Otherwise, if they weren't, then the treasurer, who's the boss over here in a cash receipts department, if that person was also the boss in accounts receivable, then that one individual could steal the cash and cover it up in the accounting records. And these questions will come right out of the I-75 test bank. Let's start with this. Which department is primarily responsible for initiating orders in the revenue cycle? Is it A, accounts receivable, B, shipping, C, billing, or D, sales? And the answer is the sales department. Sales or order department is responsible for initiating the sales process by creating the sales order. So when a customer places an order, the sales team generates a sales order that serves as the basis for processing the transaction. And this document is essential as it authorizes the next steps in the revenue cycle 
such as credit approval, inventory picking from the warehouse, and shipping. As for the wrong choices, Accounts Receivable is responsible for recording and managing customer payments and outstanding balances, but they do not initiate sales orders. Instead, they monitor the collection of payments for goods or services already provided. And the shipping department is responsible for delivering goods to customers once the sales order has been approved by the credit department and processed. We know that the shipping department does not initiate the sales order itself. Instead, shipping acts based on information provided by the sales department, by the credit department, even by the warehouse. The billings department creates and issues sales invoices based on the sales order and the shipping information. The billings department role is to ensure that customers are billed correctly for the goods or services provided, but billings are not responsible for initiating the sales order. And the question asked which department's primarily responsible for initiating orders in the revenue cycle, and the answer is D, the sales or order department. All right, what about this one? In the revenue cycle, what document authorizes the shipping department to release goods for delivery to the customer? Is that the sales invoice, the bill of lading, the approved sales order, or all of these? And the answer is C, because the approved sales order is the document that authorizes the shipping department to release goods for delivery. Once a customer places an order, the sales order is generated and it contains all the necessary information, such as quantity, type of goods, and shipping terms, such as FOB shipping point. If the sales order is approved by the credit department, the shipping department can use this document known as an approved sales order to verify that the sale has been authorized by the credit department, and then shipping can determine whether the same goods in the approved sales order match what has been brought over to them by the warehouse before preparing the shipment of the goods to the customer. As for the wrong choices, the bill of lading is a legal document issued by the shipping department that provides proof of shipment and the transfer of goods. It's used during the transport of goods, but it's not the document that authorizes the release of goods to the customer by the shipping department. If the question would have asked which document in the revenue cycle is prepared by the shipping department, the answer would have been bill of lading. And the sales invoice is issued to the customer after goods are shipped the sales invoice serves as a request for payment. It documents the sale and payment terms, but does not authorize the shipping department to release the goods. And the question asked, in the revenue cycle, what document authorizes the shipping department to release goods for delivery to the customer? And the answer is approved sales order. All right, how about this? In the revenue cycle, which department is responsible for issuing sales invoices to customers? Is it A, shipping, B, billing, C, credit, or D, sales? And the answer is B, the billing department. They're responsible for issuing sales invoices to customers. Once the goods have been shipped, the billing department generates an invoice based on the sales order and shipping documentation. This invoice details the amount owed by the customer and serves as a request for payment. As for the wrong choices, shipping is responsible for delivering the goods to the customer and preparing shipping documents such as the bill of lading. However, the shipping department does not handle the invoicing process. And the sales department, they initiate the sales process by taking the customer order and generating the sales order. While the sales department is involved in starting the process, they're not responsible for issuing sales invoices, which happen towards the end of the process. And it's not the credit department either, because credit is responsible for the decision whether to extend customer credit. It's an authorization function rather than an accounting function. The billing department, not the credit department, issues sales invoices. The billing department is an accounting function. The credit department is authorization. And the question asked, in the revenue cycle, which department's responsible for issuing sales invoices to customers? And the answer is the billing department. Here's where candidates can get confused. The billing department prepares the sales invoice. And that's what this question asked. The shipping department prepares the bill of lading. It's got the word bill in it, but the bill of lading is not prepared by billing. The bill of lading is prepared by shipping. Billing prepares the sales invoice. There are three documents in the sales cycle, and they're in this order. The sales order form first, prepared by the sales department. Then the shipping department prepares the bill of lading. That's the second document in the cycle. And then the third document is the sales invoice, which this question asked about, prepared by the billing department. 
So let me know if you found this video helpful. And if you need more help with the revenue cycle or any part of the CPA audit exam, get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference